Welcome to the Unstoppable CEO Podcast with Steve Gordon. Welcome to the Unstoppable CEO Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Gordon, and uh, today we've got a great interview for you. If you are in any kind of service business and you've ever felt like selling was something that made you feel a little bit uncomfortable and maybe got you out of the position of being a trusted advisor, then you, you want to pull the car over right now, pull out a notepad and take some notes because I'm talking with Brian J. Greenberg and, and Brian uh, is, he's got one of the most interesting financial services businesses I have ever seen. And we work with a lot of folks in that industry. So that's saying something. He's generated over $50 million in revenue from his businesses, collected over 10,000 reviews. Stop for a second and think about that. 10,000 reviews from customers and, uh, He's been named one of the most creative people in financial services, and uh, he's been called the salesman who doesn't sell, and he has a book by that title, and we're going to dive into all of that today. So, Brian, welcome to The Unstoppable CEO. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Steve. I'm excited about this. Um, I love talking about sales in the context of professional services because I really think it, it, it's a little bit of a different animal. And, um, and so I'm excited to dive into that. But before we do, can you give everybody a little bit of background so they understand how you got to this stage of your career? Of course. Uh, you know, I, I started promoting businesses on the internet back in 2004. Uh, what really interested me was the marketing. Uh, I loved ranking organically in Google and Yahoo and running the business that way. Now, the other thing I really loved about internet-based businesses is that I could run them passively. So I spent a very long time learning how to sell somebody strictly without talking to them. Uh, that's, you know, I, some people in the insurance business call me the salesman who doesn't sell. I love that title. Uh, you know, I, I pride myself on being able to sell somebody and build up their trust and close a sale, you know, while I sleep. Uh, in the past, I've, I've owned an internet uh, organic marketing company. I sold it back in 2012. Uh, you know, I, I decided to focus on my own businesses. And I've just been having a lot of fun. And, and you're right, I, my main business right now is a life insurance website that I sell uh, insurance direct to consumers in all 50 states. So you've been in a lot of businesses. Why, why life insurance? Why did you, you settle there? The insurance market online is one of the most competitive niches that you can get into. Besides that, it's one of the most profitable. I think insurance is it's definitely one of the top four most difficult niches. Uh, it also has the highest pay-per-click values. So all the insurance keywords, if you were going to buy them in Google AdWords, it'll cost you $30 up to $50 a click. So what I found is if I'm able to rank in Google for pretty much anything, and if I wanted to play the long game and, and compete against the big guys in Google, I might as well pick the most profitable uh, niche. So, you know, I'm able to bring in close to $600,000 worth of organic traffic value every month. And for the amount of work that I'm able to do and that, that I put into it and the amount of employees I have, it's, it's a profitable business. So that's why I chose it. And I like it. I, I feel like we're serving people. That's awesome. Yeah. I've often said that, that life insurance is the most difficult thing to sell on the planet mm -hmm. because you're selling something that and, and collecting the money today, the benefit, and, and I know the clients we have in this business, correct me on this all the time, you can use some of the benefit while you're still alive. But for the most part, your prospects believe they're going to give you money and there's no, no hope of them getting any benefit until they're gone. And so that's a pretty hard bargain. Um, you, you've entered a difficult industry and I, I can't imagine that given the competition that you're up against, that, that building this machine online to where you're ranking for these high value keywords, that, that couldn't have been a, an easy thing to do. Um, I'm sure there were, and I'm sure it didn't happen overnight, I'm sure there were times when you thought, God, are we ever going to get there? How, how did you deal with some of the bumps in, along the way and the challenges as you built the business? Good question. You know, I, I think as entrepreneurs, we get a little bit uh, too focused on the profits, uh, you know, on a quarterly basis, on a daily basis. The one thing I always like to go back to is that the number one responsibility I have as the CEO of the company is to serve the customer. So any decision I make 
or, you know, I always want to go back to does it serve the customer? If you focus on that, it's, it's the best way. You know, I love the quote that it says the best way to become a billionaire is to serve a billion people. So, you know, as a CEO and I run a smaller company, I don't have to worry too much about shareholders or quarterly profits. I play the long game. And the long game, I know that the good guys usually win. I, I hope that they always win. And that there's a, a piece of karma in business. So if I stay honest, ethical, and, and I run business the right way, I'll get satisfied customers. And that actually kind of spins that whole marketing wheel and I have customers coming to me, which is important. Now, Steve, just real quick, you know, life insurance. Many people say life insurance is always sold, right? You always have to convince people to buy insurance. Well, I, I kind of took the opposite view. I think insurance should be bought. So I like to get people when they're when they actually want to buy insurance and I get them to choose me as their agent. So most of the time I'm able to sell them and uh, we're able to start a good relationship and I can avoid all the negativity that's involved with other people that are pushy that sell life insurance. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really key. And it, it, it's prevalent in the insurance industry just because of the way that new agents are brought into the business and taught, you know, build your list of a hundred people that, you know, and then go chase them. And, uh, and, and you've clearly taken a different approach. Um, and, and I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the thing that you just said that I think is most important and is, I think is missing in a lot of the, you know, the, the business media today is this idea of the long view. Um, even in small business, it used to be big, big businesses, you know, you're on Wall Street and you've got to deal with the quarterly earnings report and that kind of drives everything. And I feel like with the, all the chatter of social media and, and all the craziness of, you know, the, the marketing gurus and all that that are out there that tell you, you know, if you put a dollar into Facebook tomorrow, you're going to be a million, millionaire by Friday, you know, it, it, it gives us this perception of, instant re, instant reward, instant result. And I don't think that that's really the way a strong, solid business is ever built. I, how, how hard has it been to sort of push back against the world and stay focused on the long view? It is difficult. It's a, it, it is a challenge. You know, I think an important word that uh, always kind of rings around with me is relentless. Uh, from, a, from a young age, I've always been relentless. I know Steve... Um, Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, he prides himself very strongly on being relentless. And if you actually go to relentless.com, it redirects to Amazon. He bought that domain a long time ago. As far as playing the long game, yeah, I mean, that's what you need. You need to uh, have uh, faith that if you do business the right way, you're going to be the last guy standing. So, you know, over, look, I've been online and I've been in business for a long time, and I've definitely seen the guys that run businesses unethically and you know just focused on you know getting that money and uh, they don't survive so you know part of it is if you just keep doing business the right way you're gonna be the last guy standing and, and, and my belief is that if you don't quit you can't lose yeah I, I think it's it's such a critical perspective to take I, I often look at the growth line of a business. I mean, most people look at it as it's a, you know, a relatively straight line up and to the right. And I, I look at it a little bit differently. If you've ever looked at, at kind of an exponential curve where it's, it's almost imperceptibly going up at the beginning, but you get to a tipping point where then it just rockets off. And, um, and I've seen that happen in, in both of our businesses. And, and there were times were so frustrating because you felt like you were making no progress at all, but the progress just wasn't visible yet. And I would imagine for you that in building out what you've done, um, knowing what it takes to do all of this online with organic traffic, I mean, have you experienced that in the current business as you've built it out? You mean as, as far as uh, being able to stay focused on the long term, Steve? Yeah, and, and, and have you had times where the growth was maybe oh. almost imperceptible? But, it, you know, you're, you've got this choice. Do I stay the course or do I try something else? You know, look, in organic SEO, you have ups and downs, and it's ne not necessarily your doing. 
you know, Google and the search engines come out with new algorithm changes all the time. So, you know, I, back in 2012, just to go back a little bit on the history of, of organic search, uh, you know, people that were kind of scamming the system to rank organically, they got all wiped out. And Will Reynolds, the owner of Sear Interactive, he did this great speech and it really hit, me, hit home with me. He says, look, from now on, you have to do real company stuff. He used the uh, profanities, real company for the SE, real company stuff. So do stuff that real companies do and only do it. So, you know, don't, you know, pay somebody, you know, overseas to build uh, blog carnivals or private blog networks. So I guess, you know, boy, you know, some of it has to do with faith that, you know, if I'm doing it the right way and I'm doing it per the, you know, the guidelines and I'm doing everything that real companies do, that every time Google comes out with an algorithm update, my sites do better. Hey, knock on wood, but that's, that's, that's how it's gone. Uh, it does take patience, right? I think that it's important um, to grow as your business grows. To keep everything, you know, I, I, I've, I don't have any investors. You know, some of my competitors have $50 million of inve investment and almost they, like, they just burn through money. And that's a lot of stress, right? Uh, I've run my business uh, and invested off profit. So I've grown slowly, all right? That, that's the kind of uh, trade-off. So it's just about faith and if it, that if you're doing everything right that you're going to get paid in the end it's it's very much business karma yeah i i think you're you've got i think a really great philosophy and what i'd like to do is we're going to come back in just a second we're going to dive into brian's strategies uh all around you know selling without having to sell and so brian i'm looking forward to to getting into that and going deep. We're going to be right back with more from Brian Greenberg. Hi, this is Steve. I hope you're enjoying this interview. We've got more to come in a minute, but what I'd love for you to do right now is rate this podcast. Leave us a review, rate us on iTunes. It'll really help others discover the podcast and help us help other CEOs, other business leaders become unstoppable. So if you go to unstoppableceo.net forward slash iTunes, you can find instructions there and links that will take you right to where you need to go to review the podcast. Thanks so much. Now back to the interview. Welcome back. This is Steve Gordon and I'm here with Brian Greenberg and Brian, um, you've got a new book and you, you've, the book is, is by the title, I guess that you've been called in the industry, the salesman who doesn't sell. Um, I, I'd love to hear your approach to sales and, and how you, uh, you think it differs from, what's kind of common out there in, in uh, industry today? You know, the thing that I love the most about how things are going, uh, especially online and, and, and how people choose the businesses that they choose to do business with is reviews. So a big part of my book is I, I preach very strongly that you should do business honestly, ethically, and transparently. But then the question is how to leverage that. So, if you focus on customer satisfaction and you know how to leverage it, you're going to grow your business faster than anybody. There's been studies that, you know, the companies that have the highest net promoter score. Uh, Steve, I don't know if you see this uh, on, on a lot of the software you'll buy. They'll, they'll say on a score of one to 10, uh, how do you like the software? Would you recommend it to somebody? That's net promoter score. Now, the companies that have the highest net promoter score are the ones that experience the quickest and, and the most revenue growth. Now we're talking about Zappos and Amazon and USAA, uh, Nordstrom's. So uh, what I like to teach people is how to leverage it. Uh, and if you focus on reviews, my, my goodness, Steve, reviews are so persuasive. Reviews are like the new references. People, you know, if you're going to choose a service provider, you say, well, give me, give me three references, right? You don't have to do that anymore. You can show them a hundred references and they're sold right then and there. People go on to Yelp and they see somebody has 15 five-star reviews. It's a done deal. So, you know, part of what I like to teach people is to focus on reviews. If you focus on reviews, you're going to be focusing on doing business the right way and, and focusing on the customer. And what I've experienced is exponential growth myself. Uh, the more reviews I get, the more social proof I can show any potential customer. Yeah. And you've got an insane number of reviews on your website. Um, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen so many um, on a site, particularly on a, a site 
that's selling a, a high-end service. <laughs> so how would, if, if a business owner is listening to this, how would they begin to focus on reviews? What should they start doing to collect the reviews? What, what are some of the things they can begin doing right away? You know, the first thing is a mindset. I think that so many CEOs uh, don't know the value of the reviews and that's why they don't focus on it. Now, I'd like to go ahead and put a, a value on reviews. I value a review I get on my own website that I control at about $100 each. Now, besides that $100, every year I get about $25 out of it. And that just has to do with the increase in conversion rates. If I get a review on a third-party website, a website that I don't control, like the Better Business Bureau, or Google Business, or Yelp, or TripAdvisor, depending on what you focus on, I value those reviews at $250 each, and $50 each year after that. Now, it's, it's not a science how to measure that. I just know that I close so many more sales. My conversion rate compared to my competitors is about a thousand times higher. All right, so look, I, so the first thing is focus on it. The next thing, obviously, ask for it. I think so many people don't ask for it. Uh, the time to ask for it is when you finish the service and you ask the customer, are you happy? And that's the time to ask. So please, all you have to do is ask. And, you know, for, for folks who are in a service business, um, I mean, you do a lot of what you do online, but for an attorney or an accountant or somebody like that who is, is working in close kind of proximity with their clients and has, has a really tight relationship with them, um, I, I know from talking to them that sometimes they feel a little bit uncomfortable asking for stuff like that. What would you say to somebody like that in, in terms of how to, A, how to have the mindset to get over it, and B, how would you approach that if you were in their shoes? How would you ask? I, I like giving them a value to the review so they know it. You know, it's not just, you know, a favor. It doesn't, it, it's something that uh, they can do for you. It, almost reciprocal, right? If you do a good job, uh, they want to help you. Uh, please know it. it is not a form of bragging. I think so many people think it's, it, it's bragging. It's not I almost think that it's an ethical responsibility for the people that can get good reviews to actually get them and display them. That way it proliferates that the best businesses will get the business, right? And, and that's where I want to see everything go. I, I want to see more and more businesses focusing on the customers, being ethical, and the way to display that is with the reviews. Now, Let's say you have an attorney or an accountant. I, I know they're not comfortable asking for reviews. You don't necessarily have to verbally ask. You know, I use email. Email is by far the best way to get reviews. Uh, I like to ask for a review first that I control. So I, I built a program. There's tons of, of software out there. Uh, just ask them for, you know, a review on five stars and, and a comment. Uh, you control it. If it's a bad review, you don't, you don't, you don't have to display it. If they give me a five-star review, I send them another email with the exact comment that they gave me with a direct link to the exact URL on the Better Business Bureau where you submit a review. Make it incredibly easy. Even on Google, I'll give them the exact URL that'll give them the pop-up and they'll see the stars. Make it super simple. But utilize email and, and send it more than once. You It's so easy to automate. I send a review email on the third, seventh, and tenth day. And if they give me five stars, I'll send them three more emails asking uh, for reviews on those third-party websites. That's fantastic. And, and I think that's a great approach to do it. Now, how important do you think, I mean, I, certainly the, the, the traditional way of doing this, particularly for, for the types of business we, we were just talking about, is to, to get a review or get a testimonial. I mean, in the old days, we used to get these things and stick them as letters right. in the three ring binder, right? And the client <laughs> would kind of be the brag book that you yeah. have on your coffee table in the lobby that you'd hope they'd thumb through while they were waiting mm -hmm. for the appointment, you know? And, and so it, it seems really natural if I'm, I'm in one of these service businesses to get it and put it on my website. How yeah. important for these types of services do you think it is to have it out on third party sites? I think it's very important. I think people uh, know that if, if it's on, uh, you know, the company's website, that it, it can be manipulated, right? Uh, you know, they, they'll look at those reviews and they'll decide, you know, how legitimate they look. On a third-party website, 
the businesses have no control. If someone gives you a bad review, you can't get it down. You can say, oh, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to call Google. I'm going to call Yelp. You cannot get it down. Uh, so, you know, people trust those. And I, and I think the more people uh, use those services and find that they work, they build up more and more trust for those services. Uh, I also want to say, you know, how to organize uh, your reviews so they look legitimate, okay? Uh, you know, yes, yeah, somebody might send you an email saying, oh, how great you are. Thank you so much. It's not really usable on your website. Use the Amazon, you know, internet standard type of review to display. Now, for that, you're going to need the customer's name. You're going to need the date of the review. You need stars. If there's no stars, it doesn't, doesn't do it. Uh, I like putting the city and the state of where the person was because I do business in all 50 states. Uh, and then I get comments. I require somebody to put in 20 characters of a comment. Those are incredible reviews. People look at those. They get the similarity effect because they can see, uh, you know, where they are. Uh, I even take it a step further, Steve, and I say what product they bought. So I say what company insurance policy they bought and whether they bought a 20-year term or a 30-year term. Uh, the more details, the better. But use the internet standard, please. Those are the ones that are really going to tip the scales for you. Well, and, and I, what I like about all of the different details that you're getting there is that for, for the next customer who's mm -hmm. trying to figure out what do I buy, Oh, yeah. For them to be able to see that there's someone in my state or in my city who bought the same product and here's, mm. here's what their experience was like. Now that gives me a lot of comfort. And, oh, yeah. you know, one of the things that I, I believe that we, as a fundamental product that every business sells is confidence. Mm. You're transferring confidence from, you know, your business or from the other customers in your business to the new customer so that they can feel good about this new little journey of trust that they're going on. Cause they're, they're taking some risk coming in and doing business with you. And obviously you can have guarantees and, and all that sort of stuff in place, but, uh, but that risk is still there. And I think the, I mean, you see a lot of people do money back guarantee and all that stuff. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. But I don't think that removes nearly as much risk cause they still have to trust that you're going to honor it as 10 or 50 or a thousand or 10,000 like you have comments from other customers who have already had success. It's hard to ignore that. I think that you're exactly right. Those reviews build trust and, and they build confidence that if they do business with you, they're going to be one of those people uh, that had a great experience. Uh, one other thing that reviews are so important, even when I'm choosing businesses, I'd love it's very important for me to choose a business that has reviews because that business has accountability. If something goes wrong, as a customer, I know what to do. Uh, I'm going to try and, and get them to fix it. If they don't fix it, I'm going to give them a bad review. I'm, I, you know, and, and my goodness, that is an unbelievable emotion, uh, uh, negotiating tactic for anybody uh, who's a customer for any service. Now, I can put a, a negative review, and then if they say, oh, I'm, you know, that'll get their attention. Now, almost always, uh, they'll fix the issue, and then I'll remove the review, all right? And I've, done, I've had people give me bad reviews, although I always have the opportunity to fix it, and they'll take it down. So it, it's very important. You know, I, I don't see, we haven't touched this on this yet, but if, what to do if you get a negative review? Uh, don't react. Don't fight it. Uh, <laughs> fix the problem immediately. Apologize. Play the victim. Please, please let them know that it, it hurts your business so substantially. Uh, give them a refund, be willing to take a loss on it. A negative review, when I put a, a value to, to positive reviews, a negative review can cost you $10,000 plus. I've seen so many businesses have to close their doors and rename their business and start all over again. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, the, 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 power, the power cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, we, we've talked about reviews and, you know, the, the approach that you've got really puts your customers in the salesman's position for you um, by, by letting them kind of get out there and say, you know, you're Mr. Future Customer, you're in this position I was in, here's the problem I faced, here's what I did, and I got a really great result. So they're doing all the selling for you, which is really, really powerful. 
beyond that, how have you, o- over the course of building this business, you know, earned that, that moniker of the salesman that, who doesn't sell? What are the other things that you're doing? You know, I think you touched on them. So I, I use a, a something that I, I think that everyone should use. It's uh, user experience testing. So I, I like to use usertesting.com. And for $50, you could have someone go through your website. Uh, they usually almost about an hour. You can see their screen and they're talking uh, while they're going through your website. And what you want them to do is act like a normal customer. From that, I can find out all the questions that I'm not answering from the, question, from, from the customer. If the customer has to call you to ask a question, I've basically uh, caused a big problem for myself. So, you know, some companies don't list prices. That, that's a barrier. Like you said, a money-back guarantee, a free trial. Uh, all these things uh, to make things easier, right? Uh, what is the return policy? What is the shipping? Tell them right up front. Don't, don't make a mask. Because any questions that they have that aren't a- answered, they're going to leave your site. They're going to go to your competitor, and if they're doing it better, you're going to lose them. So I like to just address every complaint. And I ask, you know, my, my salespeople too, what are the questions that you get most often? And then I will head them off through the sales process. I'll answer those questions. If I answer every question, uh, then you'll, you'll get sales even for, for, for products that don't normally sell without uh, a sales process or, uh, you know, a face-to-face interaction or a phone call. Uh, you'd be surprised that people will just go ahead and buy and put their credit card down or, or sign up uh, just like that. You know, the, for, for most of us, the, this is all about looking at something that we want or that we need and, uh, and really, you know, being enabled to make the purchase. Um, and I think for, for a lot of businesses, we haven't really thought through what it takes to, to allow somebody to enable that future client to make that purchase. They've got all these questions. And I know sometimes I talk to business owners and, and it's like they get a little bit offended when, when they, they're asked the questions because, you know, they're um, maybe not, not prepared to answer them or they don't understand why the, the customer has that question. Um, when you can address all of those up front ahead of time, you eliminate the need to sell in, in the, the way that most people go, Oh, I don't want to be sold. You know, you're now enabling that person to actually make the buy, you know, they can come in and they can purchase. And, um, and so, but doing that required, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not like you sit, sit down one day. Um, I mean, maybe you've got a better system for doing this than I do, but I've never been able to sit down one day and just think about all of the questions and they come up, they just, they come up over time. They change over time. Um, and it sounds like you've got some feedback loops there. Mm. When, when you get that, where does that go into the sales process? Does that plug into content on your website? Do you plug it into educational webinars or videos? How do you find the right place to put it in the sales process? For, for my particular businesses, it's, you know, kind of through the sales process on my website. So I'm kind of directing people, uh, the process that I want them to go through. Right. So I'll, I'll just, I'll have them run a quote. I'll have them, I'll give them all the reviews. I'll let them choose. I'll let them do all the research. Uh, webinars of course are, are a wonderful way, uh, to do it. You know, the whole goal is, is to have them, you know, being sold and they want to do business with you without you having to sell them. Now I, I agree. I, you know, if people keep asking me the same questions, especially like, why should I do business with you? Or why should I trust you? Yeah. Those can get, you know, under the skin a little bit. That's why I love answering them on my website or, or like you said, in a webinar or, 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 or however your sales process goes, sell them there, you know, take it off your plate. You know, that's my motivation really is to, is the more questions I answer, the easier I make it, on, the easier I make it on myself and my sales team and the less resources and time uh, I need to put into it. You know, I, I ran, a, I still run a drop ship business and, and it was tracking information. Oh, what's my tracking? When it's going to arrive? Well, when, when I automated it and I send them the tracking information automatically, it cut down like 30% of my customer service time, right? So, yeah, when they come up, 
please, yeah, do a knowledge base. Make sure you answer it because then you don't have to. Answer it once on your website or, or in your sales process and then don't do it again. Yeah, and I, I, going back to this idea of, of transferring confidence, if they see that you have thought through all of these things and you've been proactive about it and you've put the information out there, it's, it elevates trust so much, I think, you know, they feel they can now feel confident. Okay. They, these people have a process. They've thought through everything. They knew what all of my questions were. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know how much you're on the phone in, in sales. Uh, and it sounds like you've got a sales team who is probably on the phone with prospects. Mm -hmm. um, do they ever have the experience where, you know, a customer is kind of quoting your yeah. stuff, right? And, and, yeah. say, well, oh, and I read this and I read that. And, and so I think we're ready to go. I, my, the salespeople love it, right? Because people will read the testimonials on all these places more than you could even think, right? So a lot of times they'll call and they'll be speaking to my salesperson, Jen, right? And they'll say, oh, Jen, I'm so happy I got you. I'm so happy uh, you're the salesperson because I read all these beautiful reviews about you. That's why I chose you guys. Uh, just, uh, they were just so impressed. And this happens every day. And that's wonderful, right? Now, you know, another thing I wanted to bring up, these review sites, if you offer reviews, not only in your service, but all the other products involved and all the different options, people want an opinion, and that's how they do their research, right? Uh, you know, Yelp and, and Amazon and uh, TripAdvisor, they, they, they have just an unbelievable amount of traffic as search engines. People go there to do their research. So, you know, especially if you're in a business that uh, – you know, you have the ability to do that. I, I mean, people come to my website to do the research, right? To find out what are the best companies, to find out what most people are buying. So it is just a, such a strong sales tactic that people really should be using. Uh, and if they're not using it to this full capacity, just keep doing it. And, you know, they've done studies where if people get, you know, 10 reviews on Yelp and, uh, you know, it can increase their business by 20%. It's just, it's so powerful. Well, and, and for a, a business that is local in scale mm. you know, or even regional, I mean, most of the time I, you know, I look for reviews all the time and it's often very difficult to find a business that has more than a couple of reviews. A lot of times what you'll see in a local area is everybody's got like one or two, you know, it was like their mother and their aunt you know, Aunt <laughs> Betsy came to the restaurant and left the review. Those are good uh, too. Yeah. You know, those are all great, but then there's the one that's got two dozen. Yeah. And I, I know that they get the lion's share of the business, but mm -hmm. the good news there is they've probably only got two dozen and it's not that hard to get twice that many or four times that many over the course of, you know, a year or 18 months. And now you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. I, I really, this is a tactic that, that really you don't hear a lot of people talking about. And I think there's a big opportunity right now for, um, you know, the, the big brands are doing it already, but most businesses aren't the big brands. You know, it, if you've got a business where you can kind of look around and see none of your competitors are paying any attention to this at all, mm -hmm. it is a really quick way to get ahead. You know, uh, these review websites, Yelp, TripAdvisor, uh, it is such an opportunity for local businesses, local service businesses, everybody. Now, it, it, it actually has a funny name. It's called Barnacle SEO. Barnacle SEO is the process of, of attaching yourself to a larger in entity that's going to bring you in the resources. If you're a local service business and you have a lot of Yelp reviews or Google business reviews, I mean, that is going to bring you in a tremendous amount of business. I think so many people... Uh, would be surprised. People can build very large businesses from just bringing in traffic from these third-party websites. I mean, Amazon Merchant Services, you know, people just sell on Amazon or Etsy. Or, but boy, definitely these uh, local review sites are such an opportunity. Well, this is, this is such a fascinating and, and refreshing approach, and I appreciate you sharing it with us today. Um, I know folks are going to be curious about how to dive into the details of this. So um, for those who want to find your book and, 
and uh, really start implementing things, where's the best place for them to go? You know what, uh, Steve, I'd like to give all your listeners the free audio version of my book, The Salesman Who Doesn't Sell, A Marketing Guide to Selling While You Sleep. I go into very much detail. I try to give away as much as possible, and they can get it at brianjgreenberg.com slash unstoppable CEO. That's awesome. Um, and uh, we're going to do one additional thing. Um, so for if you're listening to this and you go to uh, unstoppableceo.net and, and find this episode with Brian, uh, for the best comment that's left over the next uh, two weeks after we launch the episode, we're going to send, we're going to go get five copies of the book and we're going to send it to the five best comments um, up on the website. And so uh, we'll send a paperback copy. You can get the audio book on Brian's website. Um, Brian, this has been fantastic. And, and thanks for sharing the book. Thanks for your generosity there and, and for sharing this approach. I think it's, uh, it could be a real game changer for a lot of businesses. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Steve. I have a lot of respect for you and your business as well. And thank you for having me on. Thanks for listening to the Unstoppable CEO Podcast. Help others discover this show. Leave a review and rating on iTunes at unstoppableceo.net forward slash iTunes. 